Happy Halloween! Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are a subscriber, hello, welcome back and thank you for the continued support. If you are new here, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's video and maybe subscribe. As promised, I am finishing off October with not one but two spooky themed videos this week, all relating to my Halloween costume. So let's get started. So it's no secret that I love Dracula. And in particular, I love the character of Lucy Westenra. I've been wanting to make a Lucy Westenra costume for years. And and since I actually have a lot of time on my hands, I decided I was going to do it for this Halloween. This has been a dream costume of mine and I am so happy to have made it. I designed the costume myself using inspiration from the description of Lucy in the novel and from 1979's Nosferatu's Lucy. I also decided to draft my own pattern because I didn't want to alter existing pattern pieces and there were some pieces that were a little bit difficult to find in existing patterns, so it was just easier to do it myself. If you're interested in seeing in-depth videos about my design process and drafting my pattern, they are available on Patreon. So if you'd like to check that out, I will leave my Patreon in the description box down below. Let's get on to the sewing process. Hello, voiceover Marie here. So, as with any sewing project, I begin by pinning my pattern to the fabric and cutting my fabric. For this costume, I used muslin, lace, and netting. I opted for a more yellowed muslin than a white one as I wanted Lucy's dress to look slightly aged and a bit more dirty. After all, she has been in a coffin. Also, super important reminder that pinning your patterns to your fabric is super important. Yes, it's time consuming, but it makes the process of cutting your fabric so much easier, quicker, and cleaner. So do it! After I cut out the fabric, I begin working on my top. I decided to make my bodice and my skirt two separate pieces. I also want to preface this by saying that I did not go for a fully historical look. I wanted the gown to look almost like a pre-Raphaelite painting. Though I did wear a corset and the proper undergarments underneath, the bodice itself has no boning, but it is lined. This is partially because I just didn't have time to buy boning, nor the money at that point. Things will change here on this channel in the future and I will have boning. For this bodice or shirt waist, I wanted a pigeon breasted look, so I made sure to exaggerate the proportion, add lots of pleats, and make it form fitting. And make it form fitting while making it look loose. A lot of fitting went into this costume, and that's okay. My best advice to making a fitted garment is to cut it two sizes too big, then try it on, pin it, cutting, and sew until it fits your desired needs. It's always better to take a garment in than to take a garment out. I decided to forego the sleeves because my robes were going to have sleeves on it and I really did want my underlayers to have an almost undergarment-like quality to them. I did line my bodice to help add more volume to the shape of the blouse. After I was finished with the blouse slash shirt waist, I moved on to my skirt. For the skirt, I just made an A-line pattern with a train in the back. Like I did with my blouse, I also fitted my skirt. However, it did end up being too big on me and if I were to alter this, I'd definitely add some hooks and eyes and fit it at the waist way more. But, the sash saved it. Of course, I trimmed and hemmed the bottom of the skirt. Once I was finished with the skirt, I began to work on the sash. The sash saved the too wide skirt. I always like adding sashes to my pieces because it helps cover up imperfections. The sash was really simple. It was a rectangular shaped piece of muslin with a couple of layers of pink netting sewn on top of it to add some more color and depth to the base layer. And after the sash was finished, the base layer was finished. Hello, and welcome back to my poorly lit restroom. Uh, so the Lucy undergarment tea dress, so this really does look like undergarments, which is fine, it's what I was going for, is finished. Um, the back is, is fine. I need to fix a couple of things. There's my toilet paper, but the back's fine. Um, I really love it. I'm really happy with it. And um, no, I did not tight lace. This is merely a silhouette and some costuming wizardry, some padding, and a lot of volume up here to make my waist look a lot smaller than it actually is. Nice. The next portion in my costume was the robe, which is my favorite part of the outfit. I began by sewing the body of the robe together, pinning it before sewing it, and as beautiful as this lace was, it was extremely slippery to work with. I love the finished look of lace, but I never quite am so thrilled when I'm working with it. After the body was done, I started on the sleeves. In order to get a puff sleeve, I simply attached elastic to it. 
Again, this wasn't a purely historical look, so I didn't go a purely historical route. However, if you want to go a more historical route, you can definitely gather these by hand as opposed to adding elastic. But I'm lazy and I wanted this done by Halloween, so elastic it was. And then I simply attached my sleeves onto the body. Once that was finished, I started to work on the neckline of the robe. For the neckline, I wanted to add ruffles. So that's exactly what I did. And since this lace is quite voluminous as it is, I only had to add one layer of lace to the neckline. In order to create those ruffles, I simply added pleats at random intervals, I suppose, but I did measure them. So there is a method to my madness. I did a lot of measuring with this costume and I think that's what made the results good. After I was finished with the ruffles, I began to work on the belt for the robe. This was super simple, again just one thin long rectangle that I sewed together. I decided not to add loops to my robe because I simply didn't have the time for it. I've been extremely busy with work and school and as much as I love to sew, I cannot do that 24-7. So I decided I was happy. And here are a couple of photos showing you a semi-finished look. I will be doing a separate video on this look once it's complete. I hope you enjoyed. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you're not already subscribed, well, subscribe, turn the notification bell on, and leave a huge thumbs up on this video. If you would like to see more of my sweaty, poorly lit face, consider following me on TikTok and on Instagram. I post on TikTok five times a week, do weekly live streams, and I post on Instagram whenever I want. If you'd like to see more exclusive behind the scenes content and receive free gifts such as PDF patterns, such as the one I used for this costume today, please consider joining my Patreon. Videos such as this and projects are made possible by my patrons. I will leave the information to all of my social media and my Patreon in my link tree in the description box down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this month of spooky content as much as I enjoyed making it. I will have one more video up this week, which is the grand reveal of my Lucy costume, so stay tuned for that. As always, stay safe, have a wonderful Halloween, and I can't wait to see what November holds. Bye!